me start by thanking uh, the Hall College for Women University and the local tech chapter for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my thoughts. Um, look, Pakistan uh, as a country is blessed with diverse ecosystem and is quite rich in flora and fauna. But this is a country which is also ranked as one of the top five most affected country uh, when you look at uh, climate change. For us, uh, as a country, climate change is water change. Uh, around half of the water in our water channels comes from snow and glacier melt. And these are the glaciers which are melting at a very high rate. Secondly, if you look at the extreme weather events and you look at the history of the last like five, seven years, you can easily see that the frequency and intensity of these uh, events has increased significantly. Uh, we also have a uh, long coast. Uh, the areas like Tartha and Badin, uh, we can see that sea water has started intruding. If you look at the groundwater situation in those areas, you'll see high levels of uh, salts, which means that the, the groundwater is also impacted by the saline, brackish seawater. Uh, we are also kind of a children of monsoon. Our agriculture system depends on the monsoon rains. Many areas we have you know, started observing that the monsoon pattern is also changing. This has also resulted in some areas uh, you know, this has resulted in urban flooding. Maybe our system is not in a position to cope, you know, with this high intensity of rain in a short span of time. So maybe these are the few factors which make us as one of the most vulnerable countries if you look at climate change. So the world has realized that Pakistan is one of the most vulnerable countries. So you, you can see that there is a lot of support which is available. Uh, if you look at the, the policy and regulatory framework within the, you know, within the country, uh, we see that uh, now there is a separate ministry, it's called Ministry of Climate Change. We recently promulgated the National Climate Change Policy. We also, uh, through a very participating process, we developed a framework for action where the idea was to ensure that the key features of national climate change policy are implemented. Uh, there are actions, there are short-term actions, there are medium-term actions, and there are long-term actions. And all the, because uh, a lot of these subjects, they are provincial subjects. So the provinces uh, commit to take actions both, you know, uh, in the short term and in the long term as part of uh, that framework. So we are fortunate that we have a kind of a green party in power. Our prime minister is a nature lover. Uh, he has taken and his government has taken a lot of initiatives to address environmental challenges in general and the few challenges related to climate change in particular. Uh, we wanted to have more vegetation cover as a carbon sink. So uh, they launched this 10 billion tree tsunami program where the idea is that in the next couple of years there will be 10 billion uh, trees. Uh, you know, they will be insured. Uh, the other initiative is uh, Clean and Green Pakistan where again there's a lot of focus on you know, having sustainable green cities. Urban forest is like one initiative which comes uh, under that. Then there is a uh, protected area initiative. The key habitats, uh, they are, you know, they're taking actions to uh, protect those habitats. They are expanding the national parks. They have introduced a couple of new uh, protected areas. Uh, the recent urban flooding, uh, they have, the government has also taken it seriously. So there have been uh, some actions, some st steps taken, particularly in the, the largest coastal city, Karachi, where we saw a lot of devastation because of uh, uh, urban flooding. So these are, you know, the few initiatives uh, taken taken by the government. But we have also seen that the private sector and other civil society organizations have also, you know, started 
uh, working collectively to address this challenge. There's a, there's a coalition of civil society. Um, there, uh, people are doing a lot of research, particularly focusing on climate change adaptation. Because I think it's very clear to me that for us, uh, obviously mitigation is important, but adaptation is more important. We have to ensure that our farmers, our fisher community, our people, are you know uh, they are uh, sensitized and they are trained and prepared to meet the challenges related to climate change. I think as I said earlier that for us uh, adaptation is the key. Uh, most of the agriculture in Pakistan is irrigated agriculture, which means that maybe in the initial years. Uh, there will be more water, but then there will be scarcity of water. So we have to revisit our agriculture policy. We have to revisit our cropping patterns. In Pakistan, most of the agriculture is irrigated agriculture, which means that our farmers, our producers, they depend on irrigation water to grow their crops. And this is also linked to the food security. It's very important that the farmers are trained and educate, uh, are educated to use uh, water more efficiently. WWF uh, started a sustainable agriculture program almost 10 years ago with an objective to build the capacity of farmers to improve the water productivity, to ensure that they, uh, the use of agriculture chemicals is, is reduced. I think it's also very important that the crops that they use, they are not high data crop. So that's the reason that as part of our policy and advocacy, we are uh, you know, doing a lot lot of lobbying to the government to revisit our cropping, uh, cropping pattern and maybe there should be less reliance on high delta crops. Another area which needs attention and a lot of work is being done is rainwater harvesting, particularly in our mountainous regions where we get a lot of rainfalls. Uh, there are initiatives where residents are encouraged to harvest the rainwater and then use it when it's during the, the dry period when there is uh, you know, less water available. Our dams are silting up because of poor watershed management areas and the catchment area. The result is that a lot of silt comes in our dam. It's, very, it's critically important that we improve uh, the watershed management. Uh, WWF again, you know, recognizing the need has taken uh, and is working with the relevant, relevant government agencies to improve uh, the vegetation cover in the catchment areas of some of the, the small dams. Okay, as I shared earlier, Pakistan as a country is not one of the leading emitters, uh, carbon emitter. We are at the receiving end. So uh, it's not the responsibility of the government to take action. I think as an individual, each one of us has to take a certain action. I think the most important for us is conservation of uh, energy and water. As I said, uh, for us, climate change is water change. So we have to ensure that, you know, as an individual, uh, in our businesses, in our workplace, in our houses, we conserve both water and energy. The second thing is uh, our, our uh, buying uh, priorities. We have to ensure as an individual that we prefer appliances which are more uh, energy efficient. Another aspect which as an individual we can do is uh, ensuring that our vehicles are properly tuned, ensuring that if there's an opportunity, we pool our resources, we prefer carpools instead of you know one person, uh, one vehicle. Climate change is very important for food and water security and the role of youth is critically important. I mean, that's the reason that WWF has launched a few campaigns. We have a school outreach program. We encourage students to participate in the activities, some workshops, some outdoor activities uh, that we do as part of the campaign. We have uh, YDB, the youth uh, development program. We organize digital workshops. We uh, engage students in some of our campaigns. These campaigns include uh, awareness raising of target communities, uh, you know, taking action on ground, 
collecting data, scientific research. So we need your support. And maybe that's your responsibility to support organizations like WWF in their, in their campaigns, in their work. Because at the end of the day, we need collective action. And your role is very important.